Welcome to the basement headquarters of the 1010 Club. In today's episode, we're doing a dip, a dunk, a submersion, and whatever this is. It's because I just finished up 24 hours with my Casio Duro underwater, a new Casio. The blue colorway, in fact, it's actually finishing up its time in my water bottle as we speak. Why is the big question? Well, to answer that, quite simply, we have to go back in time 24 hours ago. I'll explain as I thoroughly clean this watch before it goes in my beverages for the day. And we will do more of a traditional review in the second half of this video, including how you can hopefully still get this watch for under 50 bucks because the prices are spiking everywhere. But I really just wanted to do more of a non-traditional review of the durability of this Duro, how it does in freezing temperatures, how it can do in some almost boiling temperatures, and just see how it affects the watch. So let's start with the hot stuff. Morning coffee is the way I start every Sunday. This was filmed on Sunday, by the way. Get some <laughs> coconut milk in there and cannot forget the watch. When I told my wife what I was doing, she looked at me like I was a crazy person, as my neighbors did when they saw me drinking this on my back porch while filming and having a watch band stick out of it. After I finished, I wanted to see if there was any lasting damage from the heat, and for a second I was worried. You can see there some fog on the dial. That's from the vast temperature difference from my super hot coffee and the cooler outdoors, but you give it about a minute and it is back to glorious normal. Look at that beautiful blue dial under the sunlight. So, on to the next part of the day, and it's a pool day. I got my floaty, I got my tiny mini pool, my wife and I planning on spending the whole day there, which means pool cocktails, mudslides to be exact. That's equal parts vodka, Kahlua, Irish cream, generous chocolate syrup, some ice, and it's on to the second test of the day. Also some homemade whipped cream in there, but instead of an umbrella today, we're using the Casio Duro. Get in there! I am happy though to report uh, with the coffee and with this mudslide, no taste difference with a watch inside. So either the Duro has no taste or you just have to eat it to find out. Anyways, I'm embarrassed to say exactly how few minutes it took for me to finish this beverage, but I was excited to see the results. You get clean. You could put anything in slow motion and it would look awesome. But just like with the coffee, the mudslide had no effect on this gorgeous watch. And speaking of it being gorgeous, can we just take a second? I spent $57 on this watch. How is it possible that it can have such a wonderful color, such a mature color, such a, it's resilient, it's dark, but it has these brilliant highlights. It's a phenomenal bezel insert color as well. It's like a royal blue that is hard to see in certain angles. So hopefully when we get back to the studio, you can see it a little bit better. But oh my, it, I get lost every single time I look at this watch. So let's get some specs out of the way real quick. It is a 44 millimeter diver, 12 millimeters thick, a lug to lug of 48 millimeters, and the lug width is 22 millimeters. Really though, what a beautiful watch. The only way you could tell this is a budget watch is the fact that it says Casio on the dial and that it's ticking with a quartz movement. If this had a sweep, this could, I mean, just a side-by-side, -side, it would put so many watches to shame, but enough of that for now. Let's get back to the tests. May I suggest this Strawberry Sky from Breckenridge Brewery for not only drinking, but for drowning your watch. I have to say, this was some of the most fun I've had filming a video possibly because I got to drink a mudslide and a beer and call it working on a video. But either way, I also just started to fall in love with this watch more and more. It felt like a drinking buddy. And I do have to say, after you drink a mudslide, a beer goes down well like water. I also will admit I didn't even bother checking to see if the Duro was still working because you know it was. One more test. Three at the bottom of the sea. And finally, I did have to put it on my wrist. It just looks great. 44 millimeters on my seven and a quarter inch wrist and underwater, overwater, it just, it fits in at 
almost any function or for any activity in the kiddie pool, drinking on, on a yacht, anywhere in between. And just wait until we switch out this strap. It looks even better if that could be a thing. Now, before you think I've just fallen completely head over heels, there are at least three pretty major negatives for this watch that we will cover by the end of the video. But it is just, look at it. Look at that dial. I think it looks phenomenal. Of course, it keeps wonderful time. It's on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. And why is it on my right hand? Well, because it's being supervised by the SKX, which I will admit is probably feeling a little bit jealous as I fall more and more in love with the Casio Duro, but back to the studio for now. This watch was really perfect for everything I did this weekend, which was, well, you saw, laying in a kiddie pool and drinking most of the time, but it's more than that too. Yes, it looks awesome on that rubber strap. Yes, it fits in in the kiddie pool, but it also fit in when I was doing yard work before that, and I think it would have fit in on an actual boat or in an actual pool, not just the home activities, but it's so much more than that too. So we can fish this guy out. <laughs> do, I, do I drink it? Come on. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna figure out how to get this guy out of here. And then I need to show you how awesome, excuse me, this thing looks with some strap changes, specifically on a brown leather strap. Also quickly, a bonus bonus of this watch. Strap changes are super easy because the strap has that recess where the spring bars meet the case so you can just get a watch tool in there super easily a lot of other straps including the seiko skx oem rubber strap it just goes straight to the lug and you have to just stab in the dark trying to get a purchase on the spring bar but here should be no problem to get this on that strap and i cannot wait to show you what it looks like so check this thing out. Yes, it looked awesome on the rubber strap, but this I think looks fantastic. And finally, I think you can really start to see the blue I was trying to describe earlier in the video. There is a dark inky side to this watch face, but when you catch it in some other light, it is just almost like a, a bold cobalt or royal blue. It looks fantastic. Let me just polish that up a little bit more. Especially, I think, with this lighter brown strap, it just brings out the lighter hues of the blue. But you can't look at this watch and think it's a $50 watch. It's 200 meters water resistance, a screw-down crown. Yes, it's quartz, which generally means it's cheaper, but this thing is going to last forever. Also, I'm aware that it's just a mineral crystal and probably will scratch eventually, as will this aluminum insert. But currently... It looks pristine, and also, what's a diver without a little bit of character? The indices I'm hearing are not applied, even though they're 3D. It's one of those punch deals where you kind of press up from the other side of what is most likely a paper dial, and then it makes it look like it's 3D, but hell, it looks 3D. Look at that dial, and there's depth, the chapter ring, it's lined up. Everything looks beautiful. You could wear this watch to almost any function other than a black tie wedding. I mean, this would fit in at a yacht club. It would fit in at the pool. It would fit in hanging out with your friends with a polo or a t-shirt or no shirt like I was wearing yesterday in the kiddie pool. Anywhere you go, whatever you do, this watch is going to fit right in. Okay, I have fawned over this enough. And I did say there were some negatives, specifically three negatives, and they're kind of big, but also, you know I'm going to live with them. The first is the bezel action. I can't complain because it lines up, and it's a nice 120 click, unidirectional with a little back play, but again, I spent $57 on this watch, so not going to complain about that. The thing that I don't like as much, and it's actually getting a little bit better, is the way that the bezel action feels the clicks not only is it actually a little hard to get a purchase this is a thinner bezel and i got chunky hands so to really get a purchase i have to be up here i can't oh sorry i can't do it from the sides there's not enough i have to squeeze super hard so i have to do it from the 
12 and 6 position. And also, it just doesn't feel nice. The clicks are nice and audible, but it almost feels like the best way I can describe it is if you crack your knuckles, but you've been cracking them too much, so it doesn't like feel good, it actually kind of hurts, like your fingers feel empty. It's just kind of like a clickety clackety feel instead of, all right, I'm wearing the SNZH from Seiko right now. Let me, this is one of my favorite bezels to use. Do you hear the difference? It's just so, ah, uh, this is smooth. I will turn this like a fidget spinner, just having fun with it. I love the way this feels. And there's hardly any back play at all. It feels smooth. It's more of like a, a tinny sound. But it feels great. Again, this one, I think the word is brittle. It feels just a little brittle when you are turning it. And again, it's a little bit thin. So I got to really kind of squeeze to make it go. So that's number one. Number two is the date set. I've actually heard from people, as I try to unscrew this crown, that there wasn't a date set. I've seen several videos, in fact, of people saying you actually have to move the hands past midnight over and over and over and over again to get the date to switch. That's not true. There is a quick date. It's just, it's very hard to find. Like when you do the half click out, it doesn't, things wobble up. Oh, there it goes. So this is more of like a touch thing. And it just, you don't feel it click to the next date or anything. It just feels like I'm turning air, but you can see that the date is working. It just took a while to finesse it to find the right place to have the date set. I thought I had it pulled out and I was spinning and it wasn't changing. So I can see how that can be confusing. And so just the crown and stem action is not great. It, it does feel a little bit uh, fragile when you're using it. And again, to really kind of find where the little places are can be a little difficult, but unscrewing it and screwing it back in is really not a problem at all. And the last negative that actually I've gotten used to, and I might take it back, let me get those fingerprints off, are the size of the indices and the hands. It was a little small when I first saw it. That's how I felt. And I'm feeling less and less that way. Yes, I do still feel that they are a little bit smaller. Again, I'll bring in the SNZH. If this is the SNZF, and I totally forgot, I'm gonna feel like a clown. And just the hands are so much more substantial on here. By the way, this is 44 millimeter. This should be 42 and a half or 43. The hands here are just way more substantial. The markers here are way more substantial. Obviously they're different shapes on the Casio, but I definitely would have loved some bigger indices especially the circular ones and again the hands just a little small that arrow on the hour hand nowhere near the indices i just wish they were a little bit chunkier since it is a bigger watch but other than that phenomenal actually i'm sorry there is one more thing and that is the price it's very confusing right now so i want to bring you in on some screenshots you can't find this watch for 40 some odd dollars anymore. That was the biggest, coolest thing about this watch. And as you can see, I went onto Amazon and I found the blue version, very excited, glad that they came out with these new colorways, but it was over $70. Same thing with the black one. I went over to the black one, over $70. And for a second, I thought I was crazy. So I actually had to go back onto YouTube and check. And yeah, even some videos as recent as three months ago, we're calling the Casio Duro the best value watch under $50 or $45, $42. All these videos saying what a bargain it is. And all of a sudden, maybe Casio realized what they had on their hands and they upped the price. But if you were an eagle eye and you noticed something from the first screen grab I shared, you know where I'm going with this. There's that little button that says other prices from other sellers. And I was able to find this watch brand new still for $57. Plus, if you decided to sign up for an Amazon credit card that day, 10 more dollars off, so it would be 47. So there is a way to still get this watch for $47. And I'm not the first to review this watch. I'm not even the hundredth to review this watch, but I do have to say it put up with all of my dumb little tests. It's still ticking like a champion, still shiny and beautiful. 
And I'm standing by my statement that you could wear this watch to any function, save one that you need a tuxedo for, and you would fit right in. I mean, this watch is famous for being worn by Bill Gates, a billionaire who can literally afford any watch, and he goes with this one. Does anyone know if he knows there's a blue version out yet? Is he going to cop that one? I'm a big fan of the Casio Duro, and it is absolutely going in the $500 Watchbox Hall of Fame. Um, um, where is my Watchbox? Mr. Watchbox, hold on. This Spindrift Watchbox, not sponsored by Spindrift, only holds watches that hold their value, have impressive value, and are very affordable. Where's the last one I inducted? My wife's wearing it. There you go, little Casio. You make me proud.